welcome back to Tone Travelers, and I hope you love the two-toned hair. Ha ha! <laughs> That's what happens when you dye your hair yourself, or my mom did it. I just really wanted to cover the gray, so. It, it's Merry Christmas colors, hi! <laughs> so, um, I'm going to say this. Uh, I'm sorry that the previous video was very late. December got very busy. I am trying to film a lot tonight, so that's sometime tomorrow and Friday and over the weekend I get a bunch of videos out that should have been out a long time ago. Oh, by the way, uh, the blue one over there, this one, that is Charlotte. Uh, Noelle. Noelle will be with us until after January 1st. This one stays until all winter, until springtime. So, new dollies. <laughs> well, they're not new. I've just had them for a while. So today, now that we you've you've seen that old video that was actually that was taped on December eleventh, so <laughs> it was later than ever. Um, I'm going to talk about um my December wrap up, and then my book haul, which. My phone for a minute. I got a lot of books and I ordered a lot of books due to gift cards and then there was a little bit of a splurge buying but it wasn't very many books. So let's do the wrap up. I finished Dracula by Bram Stoker and I gave it four stars. Um, you would think five but four um, Due to it, uh, for me, I read it slower because it is classic and it's old English. And so it took time to read it. Not that I mind that anything takes me any time. It's just there were, I loved it regardless. And the closest movie that adapt, adaptation to this book is the 1992 film um, Bram Stoker's Dracula with Gary Oldman. Anthony Hopkins. No, that was not Dennis Hopper. I don't know why I even thought that, but it was Anthony Hopkins who played Van Helsing. Um, Keneal Reeves, one in a writer, Carrie Ells. Um, but the book itself, I like that it was different. I like that the companion, this one, The Bedside Bathtub and Armchair Companion of Dracula by Mark. <sighs> I'm sorry. DeWitt is Zick. Wrote. This I gave five stars because it was very informative. Um, it, it's not only about the book itself. Um, it, it does. Uh, it's about Bram Stoker, how, how he wrote it, why he wrote it, all the adaptations, movies, things, everything Dracula. It even talks about Count Dracula and the Count from Sesame Street. One bat, ah, ah, ah. Two bats, ah, ah, ah. Um, talked about Bela Lugosi and how he was treated I, I was very shocked i mean bella made dracula although there was i think his name was max shrek who um played um I, i'd have to look but he played nosferatu in the silent film in the 1920s but this this had a lot of information that some of it i i didn't know this went by the chapters it tells you what was happening in the chapters if you didn't understand something of course i was more ahead in this than in this thing but so this gave five stars if you do ever read bram stoker's dracula i do suggest that you have this with it because it helps if there are some words in there i'm like what the heck did that guy say <laughs> like that's a pretty thick accent that she got there and it wasn't sure if he was Scottish or if he was Irish or that was very very Englishy as I want to say Britishy very thick accent I'm like what didn't even know what this one guy said in Whitby was that old this old guy it helped um why Dracula got four stars is because I think of the expectations I, I mean I it was good it lived up to my expectations I think because there was a difference 
that I did not know of. That kind of, I'm like, hmm. And there was little bits of lulls in there that, you know, but it is still a very good classic. It is a staple. I love it. There's a lot of undertones in there that, that I was like, yeah, I was getting those vibes. Yeah. I got two vibes on that. Yeah, you're right. Or, oh, I didn't think of it that way. Or, you know? So, I liked it. Those two were on my TBR, and I finished that. So, in the meantime, look at this beautiful book case thingy. It's really for Bibles, but <laughs> I'm using it for books. And it fits these huge-ass books. It fits the Kingdom of Copper. I know that, because you'll see why. So, in the meantime, I'm reading this at my own pace. Because I'm trying to relax and just. Eh. It is a thousand naked strangers. A paramedic's wild ride to the edge and back by Kevin Hazard. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, you want to see something cute? Oh, who's that? That's Baby Yoda. We stand Baby Yoda. I don't care what he did. I, I didn't watch the show. I don't care. I love Baby Yoda. I love Grown Up Yoda. And it's the same guy who does Grover's voice on Sesame Street, so. Who does the Grown Up Yoda? Yeah, I can do impressions, but some of them are good and some of them. Meh. But, um. Uh, he was a former paramedic and. Uh. Deeply moving and hilarious account of a decade spent on Atlanta's mean streets, saving lives and connecting with the beauty that lies inside catastrophe. So, in the aftermath of 9-11, Kevin Hazard felt like something was missing from his life. That his days were too safe, too routine. So he wanted to test himself, see how he might respond to pressure and danger. So he signed up for emergency medical training and became, at age 26, a newly minted EMT. Running calls in the worst sections of Atlanta. So... Right now, I'm at the point where he's going through a uh, paramedic school. Uh, he did his first ride along. I'm on chapter five. So this, I like um, stories like, what do the firefighters see? What do police see? What do our paramedics see in their line of work? It's interesting to me. I don't know why. I really like like detective shit and FBI and this, this is where I like criminal minds. I think at one point in my life I really wanted to do like forensic file shit. So that's on my TBR. Uh, this is the last book. I'm not going to finish it at the end of the year. I'll finish it sometime next year. This is a book just to get me. I didn't, I haven't read every day since the 23rd. Of, no. Or the 24th. I have to look at the book, bullet journal. Um, but it's interesting. I'm just taking time so I can relax and get into my January TBR, which will be filmed separately because I got a big ass book haul. I will try to do this in order. So, I, for Christmas, bought my mom two books that she did not know about. One of them I'm going to buddy read with her next month. So you will see this on my junior TBR as well. But it is Being Mortal by Atoll Gawand. And again, I want you to understand I like, I, I don't know why I'm into health and stuff, but uh, this is modern medicine has transformed the dangers of birth, injury, and infectious disease from herring to manageable. Sorry, I read that too fast. But when it comes to the inescapable realities of aging and death, what medicine can do often runs counter to what it should do. Through eye-opening research and gripping stories of his own patients and family, Gawande reveals the suffering produced by medicine's neglect of the wishes people might have beyond mere survival. To find out what those wishes are, we need to ask. We haven't been asking, but we can learn. Riveting, honest, and humane, this remarkable book, which has already changed the national conversation on aging and death, shows how the ultimate goal is not a good death, but a good life. 
all the way to the very end. And I'm going to cry. Um, I want to read this with my mom because she's getting up there in age and so am I. She's going to be 70 next year and she doesn't look it, but I can tell she's aging. I'm going to be 40. I don't look it. I don't act it. We, in our family, we don't look our age. And we don't act it either. <laughs> but it makes me question and realize that I don't know how many more years I actually have. I hope to have 20 to 30 more years with my mother. I really do. But we, we don't know. And especially as 2020 ends with this pandemic, nothing in life is guaranteed. Not even mine. You would think mine would be a little more guaranteed. But it's not because of this pandemic. So I want to read this book with her and talk about things. And I want to know her wishes. You know, as she ages. Because I'm going to be 100 here. I don't want to ever put my mother in a nursing home no matter what. I don't. You know, I saw both of my grandparents, my mom's parents, get dementia and how heartbreaking that was and what they both, my mom and her sister, had to go through. I had to take care of both my grandparents and do different things that I hope I never have to do and I might. But I want to be prepared. I'm one of those that, you know, I'm carefree and whatever, but I, I am a planner. I like to have my eggs in a row so I know what I'm doing sometimes. Sometimes I don't give a shit, but this is something that I've been thinking about. Um, this was definitely recommended to me by Krista over at Books and Gems. I was finally convinced that I need to get this book. So, yeah, so we're going to buddy read that. I got her, and then I got her the book, Dear Life, which I think it also has to do with hospice or nursing homes. And I want her to tell me if that's a good book or not, because then I'm going to borrow it from her. But I bought it because I know of the situation that she had faced with my grandmother and placing her in a home, her own mother. And you, you really don't want to do that. It, it sucks. And for me, it sucks more than ever because I am an only child. I do have stepbrothers and a stepsister. But not hers. Uh, my, the one that I call dad. I, I don't call my stepdad. He's my dad. Um, but his children, and I am her only child, so this all falls on me, and it's rough. I, you know, you realize your own mortality, but then you realize the mortality of your parent, and it's just like, what? You're not supposed to age, are you? <laughs> so, speaking of Krista, I'm going to link, um... I think it's still up. I'll have to see. She did a live stream with Amanda, Lindsay, and Sarah. And if you go to her link, she should have all of their links because I'm terrible. <laughs> but they did a live because she got to 5,000 subscribers and she was doing giveaways. And I won one of her giveaways. And thank you so much, Krista. It was an Amazon gift card. And with those, with that gift card, I got two books. Um, the latest in the Villain series by Serena Valentino, Evil Thing. So this one has to do with Cruella de Vil. Now, I haven't started this series. But I want to next year start reading. And there's a lot of books. This is the seventh I have no idea if there's an eighth one dropping. This is the seventh. So I'm looking forward to this. I can't tell you much about it because I haven't even read the first book. And I don't know if it, if these could be standalones or not. Like the twisted fairy tales. Or twisted tales that have to do with Disney princesses. So I'm looking forward to starting this series. 
And then, because it was on a very good discount, I was able to get this book. Oh, I'm like, yes. Black Sun by Rebecca Rollinghorse. Oh my god. Look at that. Pretty. What does it look like naked a little bit? It's just black. With that. I like the inside. That's colorful. I like color. That's pretty. This is this is gonna be good. And I think that's book one of something. I mean, I never know. But I'm excited to read this. I know that many, many, many people have been talking about this. Please go pick it up. It looks like a good read, and I'll let you know when I read it. Which will hopefully... I keep saying this year, because I think it's already January. Next year. And if I said... <laughs> if I said this year with this series, I mean next year. I mean, we're so close to 2021, and I'm dreaming it's already here. So when I went to Target, and I was picking up uh, a few presents there, I always go by the book section, just to see what's on sale. Now, I got blended. This has been on my wish list forever. And it stayed the same price since I last saw it in Target months ago. So I said, I'm picking this book up because it's a dollar cheaper at Target than it is anywhere else. Unless, of course, thrift stores, and I don't... I have to find my local thrift stores and stuff. So, Blended. And it's, um... Young adult middle grade. You're so exotic. You look so unusual. But what are you really? 11-year-old Isabella is used to these kinds of comments. Her father is black. Her mother is white. But it doesn't mean she likes them. And now that her parents are divorced, and getting along worse than ever... Isabella feels like a push-me-pull-me -me toy. Being split between mom and dad is more than switching houses, switching nicknames, switching backpacks. It's switching identities. And if you're only seen as half of this and half of that, if people base identity on skin tone, how can you ever feel whole? I like that they're going to bring up... By, I, I want to read this. My mom... <laughs> I feel for these kids that are, are biracial. Because you don't know. And treat, people treat you differently. I mean, like, we had a president, Barack Obama, half black, half white. That's beautiful. That's Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream, is it not? Why isn't this more celebrated? Why do people care that you're half black and half white? You're a person, aren't you? You're just a person. Why does your skin tone matter? This is the questions that are being asked. This is why black lives matter. Because why are people being based on their, their skin color? It should never be based on that. You should never be put down because of your skin color or get less pay or live in a crappy area because of your color. I know because I, I've never lived that life and I'm sorry. And this is where I'm coming from and this is why I like reading books. I mean, she's biracial, and that's a whole nother thing. I mean, look at Mariah Carey. She's biracial, too. And she's beautiful. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And I don't understand why people think it's wrong. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. Back in those days, even amongst um, people who came to America that were white or olive-skinned, your Irish, your Italians, your Germans, uh, English word here, but more English came, um, Hungarian, uh, Polish, uh, Romanian, I don't know, Chinese, wherever, uh, um, the Middle East, I wanted to say, I'm trying to think of all the Middle Eastern countries in my head, and I know for a fact that back in those days, the Irish stayed with the Irish, the Italians, stayed with the Italians, blah, blah, blah. You stayed with your own ethnicity. I think that was wrong. And it did happen that everybody mixed. We're all a melting pot now. Pretty much. From those ancestors. But why are people still getting treated like shit? 
because of their ethnicity, their skin color. Uh, the LGBT community is getting it. I mean, I'm one of those that a person is a person. I judge you on how you are, behave and how you act towards me. Actions speak louder than words. So I will base it on how you treat others. And if you treat people like shit, then goodbye. Unless you have a damn good reason to treat a person like shit, then okay. But you can't just judge it by their skin color or their gender or who they identify as. No. Or if they're disabled, you can't judge a person like that. You know, I, I gotta tell you something. Autistic people are the really smartest people. They really are. Especially the nonverbals. They're really smart. I know somebody who has a child. No longer a child, but an adult. And they're smart. They may not be able to verbalize, but they're smart. People don't realize that. And people... This is why things got to change in this world. And I just went on a rant. But I, I'm really interested in picking this up soon. So, I got two more books. They were 20% off. They were already at a good price. So, taking 20% 20 20 off a left. One of, one of them I got for like 10 And the other one for 11 Which was cheaper than online. And I've been wanting to get this one. Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. My God, I think this is my third book from her. And if you haven't heard this about what this is about, this is almost like the R. Kelly, but fictionalized thing going on. Corey Fields is dead. When Enchanted Jones wakes with blood on her hands and zero memory of the previous night, no one, the police and Corey's fans included, has more questions than she does. All she really knows is that this isn't how things are supposed to be. Corey was Enchanted's ticket to stardom. Before there was a dead body, Enchanted was an inspiring singer, struggling with her tight-knit family's recent move to the suburbs while trying to find her place as one of the few black girls in high school. But then legendary R&B artist Corey Fields spots her at an audition, and suddenly her dream of being a professional singer takes flight. Enchanted is dazzled by Corey's luxurious life. But soon her dream turns into a nightmare. Behind Corey's charm and star power looks a dark side. One that wants to control her every move with rage and consequences. Except now, he's dead. And the police are at the door. Who killed Corey Fields? All signs point to Enchanted. That looks really good. I've heard nothing but good things about this. Yes, there are going to be trigger warnings in here. So I can I can tell you there's going to be things that might not be suitable for any. For I think there's um, rape in here, so read at your own risk. But once I read it, I can tell you. So the other one, I love the cover. It's so eighties and so pretty, in oh, it just is because. It is The Black Kids by Christina Hammonds Reed. Isn't that cover beautiful? Look at that. I love this. This is like like 19, it speaks 1980s, but I don't think it happened in the 80s. It's just oh, beautiful. No, in fact, it happened in 92. <laughs> so if you don't know, Los Angeles, 1992. Uh, I can tell you at that age, I was 11. So haha. -ha. Ashley Bennett and her friends are living the charmed life. It's the end of senior year, and they're spending more time at the beach than in the classroom. Ashley's not always so sure she actually likes her friends these days, but they've been besties since kindergarten. Everything changes one afternoon in April when four LAPD officers are acquitted after beating a black man named Rodney King half to death. I remember that. I remember asking why. Why did they do that, Mommy? He didn't do anything. He didn't. Suddenly, Ashley's not just one of the girls. She's one of the black kids. As violent protests engulf LA and the city burns, Ashley tries to continue on with life as normal, 
even as her self-destructive sister gets dangerously involved in the riots. Even as the model black family facade her parents have built stars to crumble, starts to crumble. Even as her best friend's help spread a rumor that could completely derail the future of her classmate and fellow black kid, LaShawn Johnson. Her world splintering around her, Ashley, along with the rest of LA, is left to question, who is the us and who is the them? That's a bad question. Should be, why? <laughs> well, I get the question. It's not a bad question, but it's a person who, I can't say that because it's not true, but a person who loves people for who they are. It just, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. So we're going to do what my mom bought me for Christmas. Yay! And mama really should stick to the wish list. <laughs> Didn't you see this book before in one of my other videos? <laughs> well, I am keeping mama's book. And the book that I bought with my gift card, that $100 Amazon gift card from, I think I, that was my November haul. Um, I did find it a good home. I, my, one of my friends, she's also a big reader and I wasn't sure if she would like the book and she said, I'll read it. So I gave it to her. I need to pause for a minute. Sorry about that. Um, so... I found that other, the two for at home. Now next, all these books. Oh my God. Thank you, mom. The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. King. Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited for this book, but I won't be able to read it for a while. I'm using it as um, one of the subjects for the Buzz Wordathon. I'm using the word house, and I think that's not until May. It's okay. Look at the inside of that. Look at the colors. So pretty. I just love color. It's blue. My son's favorite color. So, this is a very good book. It's a very cute book from what I've heard. It is very beloved. I'm excited to read this. So, it's just like, it's almost like a cross between Miss Peregrine and, and I don't know what else. Because it has cute, lovable children that have powers. So the next one. The Only Good Indians. By Stephen Graham Jones. One of 2020's buzziest horror novels. This, I don't know when I'm going to get to. But it definitely will be next year. I don't want to wait till October for this. I'm going to read this whenever the hell I want. I don't care what you say. <laughs> But it, yeah, a tale of revenge, cultural identity, and the cost of breaking from tradition in this latest novel, from the Jordan Peele of horror literature, Stephen Graham Jones. This reminds me, oh, he's a handsome name. Seamless, seamlessly blending classic horror and a dramatic narrative with sharp social commentary, the Only Good Indians follows four American Indian men after a disturbing event from their youth puts them in a desperate struggle for their lives. Tracked by an entity bent on retribution, his childhood friends are helpless as the culture and traditions they left behind catch up to them in a violent, vengeful way. I have to wonder, as I look at this, and then this, if that doesn't remind me of a Native American um, evil spirit called the Wendigo. Because it has... Um, horns like that. Antlers like that, I'm sorry. Horns, antlers. Um. Oh, the city we became by N.K. Chips. Yes! <laughs> I'm so excited for this book. I, I, I've heard lots of good things. This would be my first N.K. Jemison book. Fantasy of the Wazoo. And it's about New York. How could you not love that? Ooh. Look at that. That's cool. Ooh. 
a lot of these books have, have been talked about. I just know it's about different boroughs being represented and then the whole of New York and then just fantastical. And I don't know if it's considered book one or something, but... <laughs> Kingdom of Copper and the Empire of Gold. Aha! And now I have the whole trilogy. And I have to hold back because of my January GBR. Because I kind of know what I want. But oh my god, I can't wait to get to these. This one has to go first. Then this one. This is a chunker. This is a chunker. I'm excited. If the first book was amazing, imagine what these two are going to be like. Yeah, I'll never want to go to work again. <laughs> so, oh, and what's coming tomorrow? Those are all the gifts. Um, these were two I bought on my own because I really wanted them. They were on the Christmas list. And then I bought two more with a gift card. Um, Where Dreams Descend is Coming by Janella Angelis. Every Heart Adored by Sean McGuire. Song for a Whale, Lynn Kelly. I want to see that. All American Boys. Um, I know the one um, author, it's Jason Reynolds, but I cannot see the other one. Won't let me. Never wanted. But that is it. That was a lot of books. say out of wow oh, I'm not gonna put that big sucker back this is a chunker but this with season two coming out I think my show geographic I just really don't remember it's promising to be a good book so that is it I will see you in the next one and just remember to fix it. You are blessed. And you are loved. And that is what this is for.